the, the whole of the U.S. It's not only just in the arts. For example, I had my uh, Twitter account suspended because uh, about a year ago, uh, Ann Coulter, that that cunt, uh, oh, she 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 was she was cheering the bombing in Pittsburgh of a Jewish temple, and I called her a cunt, and they 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 got angry at me. I said, wait a minute. She is actually cheering the murder of people because of their religion and ethnicity. And my calling her a cunt somehow dwarfs that. Then there was a woman named Juanita Broderick who claimed that she was raped by Bill Clinton, who was cheering on Trump. And I said, what the fuck is wrong with you? I said, you, you claim that you were raped and yet you're, you're cheering on a guy who is actively uh, and even more credibly than Clinton has been accused of rape. Well, they, they, yeah. they fucked me over that way. And then... Uh, the thing that they finally got rid of me for, oh, there's this guy named Jason Johnson, who's a commenter, a black commenter on goddamn CNN. And uh, he was singing the praises of Barack Obama. And I said, Barack Obama is is a mass murderer who's responsible for the deaths of thousands of brown people by drone strikes. And, and you're cheering him simply because he's black. And, and one of the, the, and one of the, the little ass licks of this Johnson guy is like, you're nothing but a racist. Go back to your head. I said, I'm a racist. What are you, stupid? You know, and, 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 and I, I said, get your finger out of your ass. A black man is killing, uh, is killing brown people it's, just for the hell of it. It's fucking, it's fucking neoliberalism. I mean, yeah. Like, and, and like, I, think, like, I think that's the thing that's like, for me, like, from what I've seen of kind of the arts, like, that's the big thing that's actually poisoning the arts. Like where I see kind of artists, especially, are expected to be. I was reading uh, the other month down this essay by this this girl, this um, uh, this young woman, a, a curator, and just her whole conception of like what an artist is and what the role of an artist is in the year twenty twenty was just like again, there's like this PR person. Like her idea was like, oh, an artist is someone who, um, you know, basically goes into the Apple Store and does a BLM like Black Lives Matter mural. Mm -hmm. And like helps to usher kind of contemporary ideas into the world of the like uh, corporate space. Yeah, you know, just th this idea that the artist is supposed to somehow again like be some sort of social mediator or some kind of manager, some sort of managerial class. Well, they, they, there's this binary thought that all art is political, or it, it's not political. You, are you telling me my levels doesn't have political elements in it? The, a Norwegian in the family doesn't have political elements, but I'm not going to dumb things down. I'm not just going to make uh, uh, little bumper stickers for your car. I'm not going to, you know, I, I think I might have said this the last time, we, you know, I'm not going to talk about, oh, nuclear war is bad. Oh, uh, raping, uh, raping little choir boys if I'm a priest is bad. Oh, uh, uh, black uh, cops killing black men simply because they have too much melanin in the skin is bad. I don't... Any person with, with any brains and any decency is going to know these things are, are wrong. I don't have to tell you this. That's not the role of the artist. You know, an artist is going to, to reveal things about the cosmos, about reality, that are more difficult. Again, yeah. Moby Dick is not about a crazy guy who gets a bunch of morons to travel 10,000 miles across the world in, on an ocean to kill a white whale. That's that's the thing that gets you into something deeper. Just in the same way, uh, uh, a middle-aged man's uh, uh, crisis, crisis over something that has perturbed him is, is not what the, the book really is about. I mean, there are political elements in the way, for example, Tom Alden treats the women, as I mentioned, whether they are figments of his imagination, whether they are real women, whether they're his wife only appears at the end, or whether they're these holographic, basically this holographic sex toys. But that, that's just it. Like, I'm not, like when you get into it, like, I'm, uh, like with, with something like Levels, and it's sort of, I, I, I would say kind of it's political import. Like, COVID, for instance, is a th is something that's in the background of the novel. Yeah. And kind of that whole idea by, like, I suppose, I'm a, <laughs> I suppose you could say this is almost like a, 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 a social isolation book in a way. Makes but, sense. Um, but with, but with, with, um, um, with something like, with, with something like Levels, like, I, I feel like it could almost be seen as kind of like a metaphor for, you know, 2020 COVID um trump america in the same way that the castle in france kafka is obliquely a metaphor for kind of like the tail end of the austro-hungarian empire 
Well, I mean, you know, the character of the all, even though it appears towards the end, you know, the, in a sense, this is a character that is claimed to be all-knowing, all-powerful. It, it, it's what someone like a Donald Trump would want to be. Tom Alden has some of those characters. Like I said, he's not hes not a perfect character. I mean, he has some flaws. The very fa fact that if he is the person who is the author of this dream or this nightmare or this Kafka uh, reality uh, says yeah. something about him, and it says something ab about the nature of human beings at all, that we are our worst enemies. You know, that gets back to, for example, uh, th there's... there's I mentioned Charlton Heston in, in The Planet of the Apes. Uh, yeah. Charlton Heston's character goes from being a total misanthrope to being a defender of humanity in that. that and that's yeah. that's a movie that I'm going to do too. Uh, the original Planet, Planet of the Apes. Uh, uh, even though it has, you know, a lot of logical problems that he should have known he was on Earth a lot sooner. Uh, and well, have, you seen, have you seen these fucking sequels they've done to Planet of the Apes? I, uh, again, I, I've seen 15, 20 minute excerpts that a few people have sent me. I mean, I think they're, they're better they're than the typical six. Hollywood stuff, but I don't think there's anything new going on. Yeah, they're absolutely wretched. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, but uh, um, with, with again, I don't have to, I, I, I'm never going to talk down to you. I'm, I'm going to assume that you or any other viewer of my art or any art yeah. is intelligent. And we can have, we can have a disagreement. You can, you can talk about, this painter or that filmmaker, and we can disagree about Apocalypse Now, or we could disagree about. I, I someone was was arguing on their Quora, uh, who's a better actor, Harrison Ford or Robert De Niro? And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I mean, De Niro, yes, he's done a lot of shitty stuff just to make money over the last thirty years. But if you took his top ten roles, Harrison Ford can't even touch them. Could you imagine Harrison Ford as Travis Bickle? Could you imagine Harrison Ford as Rupert Pupkin? I mean, give me a break. Could you imagine Harrison Ford in a movie like uh, 1900, the Italian film by what's his name? The name slips my mind. Um, the guy who did, uh, oh, I, uh, the name slips my mind. But uh, you, it, it, it's ridiculous. And I'm not saying Harrison Ford is a bad actor. He's just not a great actor. He's not a great actor. He's better than uh, Tom Cruise. He's better than Leonardo DiCaprio. He's better than, uh, you know, uh, Keanu Reeves, but he's not a great actor. He's given some good, solid performances. The the film he did with Polanski, where his wife is kidnapped or whatnot, is a is, is, is bad. Someone like Liam Neeson is another one of these actors, like Ford, who's just stiff. Liam Neeson is always Liam Neeson. Harrison Ford is always Harrison Ford. Say what you will about De Niro, but he had that chameleon-like quality. Travis Bickle is not Rupert Pupkin. They're totally it's, different. Yeah. It's, it's difficult. I mean, like, the most beloved actor of our time, like, right now, is probably Keanu Reeves. I mean, like, that probably... Or Tom well. Hanks, who's another very overrated actor. Yeah, I Tom think, Hanks. I think Tom but, Hanks but is... It's would... likeability, though, Dan. I think, like, that's just, that's just it. Like, how he's, yeah. like, this, you know, this PewDiePie, bland, everyman, like, well, you know, well, I think, too, I think, I think he too... was... I think he was a good comic actor when he was on TV uh, with, with the yeah, with buddies. Yeah. I, he did good, solid comedy. But he, to me, to me, when I see him dramatically, uh, it, it's ridiculous. Now he's his dramas are mostly bad. Forrest Gump, eh, I mean, that's better than Saving Private Ryan. But you know, uh, the and then you had the Philadelphia well, thing, which was so preachy. Do you know a film I watched the other night? I like. I'm actually curious to get your thoughts. I, I watched them um, uh, for the first time, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Oh, by, which is which is one know? of Spielberg's better films. Uh, it's not yeah. a great film by any means. Uh, but it, it it was a film where he was actually trying to be intelligent and not condescending. The problem with Spielberg is he's always wants to wrap things up in a bow. I think you or someone might have said something like that. He always yeah. wants to please the audience. You you don't have to please the audience. You don't have to make an audience feel comfortable. Give them quality. If I'm watching a Bergman film, and when I do Persona, I don't like the film Persona uh, because... Yeah. But it's the ultimate dick-waving film because because Ingmar Bergman was right then in 1965-66. He was saying, I'm the greatest filmmaker in the world. I don't need special effects. I don't know he did it. I can take little things here and I can play with cinema like no one else could. And and whether it's that the, the, the little kid, you know, looking at the, the pictures of the women sticking his hands up, the spider crawling around. He could do it. He's saying, I'm Ingmar Bergman. You're not. 
and it 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 is the ultimate dick waving film, and he's showing off, and it, and but he can do it because it's a great film. I don't necessarily like the film, but I'd be a fool to say it's not a great film. Yeah, I, I think I think that's 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 something that's, that's that's interesting. Like, I mean, I very often feel myself um, also at the same time kind of attracted to artists who are nothing like me. Do, do you ever find this? Like, uh, like I, I feel myself kind of drawn to certain creators and their approach precisely because it's so diametrically opposed to my own. Well, you, Ozu. I mean, Ozu is a perfect example. Yeah. How so? Uh, well, I don't think Ozu, as far as I know, ever did anything. I mean, I couldn't conceptualize Ozu doing a film on the Yakuza, the the, the yeah. equivalent of a Norwegian film. I don't think I don't think Ozu would have ever done something like uh, 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 a lot of my plays where he's reworking stuff. And I mean, I have I have you know a darker take on life if you want to use a term like that, which I don't particularly like, but uh, if you wanted to use that term, yeah. Uh, uh, Ozu is in many ways more upbeat. Uh, and when he's not totally upbeat in something like Tokyo Story, there's still, there's still, uh, it, there's, there's a positivism that he has. Yeah. Positivism. That's a good way of putting it. Like, I'm, um, like I, I feel like that, I feel like there's quite a lot of positive positivism in um, uh, uh, levels, though. I think that's that's what I was alluding to earlier. That like this this is a book that I, when I think of like the New York Quintet, I do think of quite macho um, uh, uh, books. But this one does feel more like um, uh, well, women. Uh, I wouldn't say there's anything like falsely like sentimental kind of about it. Like in the way that it, it doesn't make. Because we were saying, like, like with creators who uh, try to assume what the audience is feeling, it always just comes, comes across like they're just instructing you how to feel. Like, this is a sad part, feel sad now. This is a happy part, part feel elated now. This is a con contemplative part, feel, um, you know, like, a, but, you, you know, you don't want to patronize your audience. You to well, I, I've them. always said to people when they read anything of mine, uh, 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 Jessica's, she, she's probably going to, We'll have to wrap up pretty soon because probably gonna, okay, that's uh, fine. But in maybe another what is it? Another ten or fifteen minutes we can go. Um, but uh, I've often said what I intend is meaningless. If you what what you get, if you know, oftentimes people will bring up things or, that I didn't intend or whatnot, and I oftentimes I'll say, oh, that I can see where where you get that. Uh, uh, or sometimes they'll say this reminded me of a. But A was influenced by B, which was influenced by C, which was influenced by D, which is what I was going for, for D. But the, there's that there's that dominoes that fall down to this A, to something I never heard of. And I said, oh, that's interesting. But that's the way art should be. Art should be something that, that there are these connections. And once I'm done with something, I'm just the author. You know, if you read Levels, or you read A Norwegian in the Family, or you read a play, or you read one of my poems, and you, you get something... Uh, really good from it uh, that that affects you positively. That's good. I, I can't ask for more. Yes, again, if I'm writing about the Nazi invasion of Poland and you think it's about a poodle, then something has gone askew. But uh, but yeah. uh, but uh, if, if it's reasonably within in the realm of possibility, you know, if you're reading levels and you know it reminds you. Uh, maybe of some confusion that you had, let's say, when you were coming out of the closet or something. I, I'm just pulling something out of my head. Then well, that, well, I, I didn't well, intend that, but that's good. Head, to hit the nail on the head, like, isn't, like, what what came to mind instantly reading Levels was that isn't life a bit like this? Isn't life a bit like Levels? You know, isn't, I mean, again, maybe that sounds a bit too open-ended, but, like, uh, life sometimes does feel like this thing where, kind of, you know, everything is slightly against you and it's like this challenge where you have to like you you have to accumulate something you have to get your way to this goal this parcel object and time slips by well not not always but most of the time always. the be not always but most of the time the best fiction or the best art will take a character if it's a narrative thing will take a character uh, and put him in a different situation but the character is based in reality. Even if it's in an unreal situation, you want to have the character 
working within the confines of the diegetic universe that you've plopped them into. You don't want to have, if I have a big Frank Conchetto and I do, and in this book that I'm going to do that's going to end the Maravelli saga, I have a flashback to it. And we find out that big Frank was really, uh, you know, supporting charities and he, he really didn't care. And I, and I totally undercut that character and try to shoehorn him into something for some reason, but let's say I had a, a revelation and I became a born again Christian, that would totally, and I wouldn't, even if I did become a born again Christian, which I won't, but even if I did, I would never, I would never violate my own tenets of my, my universe. Big Frank is, is a nasty piece of work and he's always going to be a nasty piece of work because that's what he, he has to be to make the art that I put him in work. Uh, you know, you can't take, you can't take, for example, Uncle Billy from It's a Wonderful Life and plop him into a Godzilla movie. It's not going to work. I'll, I'll hit you with some, like, short and, uh, short and sweet questions, like, um, uh, like, bust through some, like, before we wrap up down. Like, okay. um, uh, would you ever consider in the future making, like, uh, a horror novel, like, uh, a horror book? You know, I, like, I, uh, I thought about doing a genre kind of thing. It would have to be, it would have to be something that went beyond the horror genre in the same way that the super seven went beyond a spy book and the way that edge of the shown and, and the levels go beyond sci-fi because I don't want to do something that's been done before. So if, if for example, I had an idea with a, with a, some kind of creature like the all, but the all was some, some negative creature, maybe I would do that, but it would have to be something that would, would come to me. I, I I'm not going to just, I can't see myself, at least now, I don't have any idea that I would do a horror novel. Uh, the closest thing to a genre book, again, would be maybe doing the World War II book, but it wouldn't be like other World War II stuff. Hmm. Like, what what do you think, uh, kind of a, a more sort of general question, but what, what do you think COVID's overall impact on kind of the arts is going to be, like, um, uh, from from uh, 2021 on? Uh, there'll be a lot of preachiness early on, and probably the best stuff, excluding myself, It'll take decades to sort out. Just like, you know, when you look at, for example, some of the, the best war films of World War II, they weren't the ones that came out during World War II or afterwards. They came out 20 or so years later in the late 60s, early 70s. So, uh, and what particularly will happen with it, I can't say, but it, it's going to take some time to sort out because now most of the art that's created is going to be anti-Trump bullshit and Trump is going to be a footnote in history. Well, my next question was going to be rather: um, uh, <laughs> Is can we expect a Trump novel from uh, Dan no, Snyder? No, no, he's he's oh. he's he's not he's not he's not worth it. I mean, that uh, you know, I that I, I can't see anything interesting in him. You know that he's a bumper sticker. He's not he's not really worthy of any artistic consideration, in my estimation. You know, he's not he's not a worthwhile fictional ca character. Richard Nixon. Is a different story, and I I I I touched oh, upon Nixon in there. Nick Nix, Nixon actually had some depth. He was a twisted character, but Trump is basically just a, a an overgrown baby shitting in his diapers. So, yeah, I mean, uh, what what are your kind of uh, what are your kind of thoughts on um, kind of the films that have uh, come out this year? Kind of the sort of big. Uh, award nominated films like Parasite and all these things. Haven't haven't seen any of them. Um, the Shape of Water. Have you seen that? That's based on a book, isn't it? I think I might have read the book. No, uh, not in this case. No, no. no I'm talking. Uh, that was something about was it something with an elephant or the, was it the color of chocolate? Or something? No, I think I think you're thinking of um, uh, the Okia thing or something. Like uh, I think that's something on Netflix. Like I okay. haven't seen that myself, so maybe I'm just no. I, and I, I, again, I uh, I'm not. I'm not, unless someone, you know, says, oh, you got to see this, Dan. But then then again, Jessica just recommended this this older film, which I, doesn't hold a candle to Ozu's Tokyo story. So I, I tend to be wary from it. Maybe if I, maybe when I retire in a decade or so, I'll have um, more time. Yeah. My, my, my last, my kind of final question, then, I guess, like, uh, it's, uh, have you ever read uh, uh, Jess's, uh, a uh, recent uh, novella about uh, Joan of Arc. I read everything of hers before any of you. <laughs> right, great. Like, so, like, um, what? I'd like to know your thoughts on it. Well, I, I think it's a, a great novella. I think uh, she, uh, uh, 
you know, it took her longer to write that than it took for me to write this uh, levels. Um, and I, I don't mean that uh -huh. as a criticism, but that's just the way <laughs> she operates. I know. I wish that I wish that in, we could be retired because then she could be more free to do more writing. Um, yeah. uh, and you know, I, I told, I told her, you know, I gave her a couple of ideas or a couple of suggestions about, uh, what not to do. Uh, uh yeah. she based it mostly upon, uh, uh, what's his name's, uh, silent, uh, Joan of Arc film. Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy who did vampire, Carl Theodore Dreyer's, uh, Joan of Arc yeah. film. Um, yeah. uh, and yeah, uh, I, it, that's a good example, though, of something I would never write because I'm not, I don't have any religious sense. Not that Jessica is religious, but, uh, I, I uh, you know, if I, I, I couldn't see myself doing Joan of Arc as a, as a, as a figure because she's so attached to that. Unless I, 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 I would take her as, as being someone who is clinically psychotic. It's a very, it's a very peculiar kind of religious sort of sensibility, though. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the moments that she chooses are, are very good. And the fact that she calls a uh, Jean rather than Joan, um, uh, it, it has a Bresson kind of quality to it. Yeah. 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 Like, um, uh, like, uh, that's, um, like, uh, like, do you, um, um, like, she, I know she hasn't read Nebels herself. Like, are you anxious for her to read it? She's gonna do what she's gonna do. She, you know. Yeah, I, I don't have time. You, you shit out a novel every three weeks, and you shit out plays every three days. You know, and so <laughs> she'll read it when she reads it. And you know, uh, I and I've told I've told her that she, that her character is the the great is the key to the to the book and whatnot. Someday she'll yeah. read it, and then she'll complain about this or that because she hates Jessica Wagner that that character. Yeah, you know, I'm not uh, like that cunt. I don't talk <laughs> like this. You know, so. <laughs> It's that, that's, well, you, you betray her so flatteringly, so you yeah. know. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. Uh, but she'll she'll read it eventually. Some uh, I, she hasn't read. I don't think she's. I don't think she's read any of my work since a Norwegian in the family. Let me think. Uh, well, I, I, she's read a few of the plays, uh, but Ludo Ludo Vico technique, like yeah. you know, get the pincers out. Yeah, yeah, but she'll do what she, she's she's going to do what she's going to do, and uh, and you know that that's fine I, as long as she's. She's producing and, and whatnot. Uh, it, it's it's difficult to to keep her uh, from imploding because uh, she's very much more affected by things than I am. She's she's into that enneagram stuff and I'm not. She's into all of this stuff and then then when she finds out or something that I saw something about, like I mentioned, this woman that uh, is is plotting out the book and whatnot. You know, she she hates all these women. You know, well, how could you be with them? I said, well, I didn't know you were out there. And, and, and when I was 25, you were 13 or, or 14, you know, so it's like, you know, uh, I, I had to be in my 30s before I could, could even, uh, even if I met you, you, that I wouldn't be arrested for pedophilia, so. Ah, um, love. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's always the same, isn't it? It's yeah. Domestic bliss.